well, not downtown, but you know, inside the Beltline. Uh, about 20 years ago, my wife and I, our family lived maybe four or five miles from here. And I used to jog past this church building occasionally. And it's a really, I'll show it to you, it's a really beautiful building. And uh, this is the first time I've been you know, on the property. And we're doing a fundraiser for a community outreach social ministry uh, called, uh-oh, called Community, no, Neighbor to Neighbor, which I've, I've, I've done uh, fundraisers for that organization before, not with this church. It's the first time I've ever done anything with this church, and it's good to be here. Uh, I'm going to be doing a, this painting, and um, let me turn, turn you at it again. Uh, this is not the lighting I want. I'm, I'm expecting the sun to go down tonight. <laughs> it's, it's go down. This is one of those nights when it's going to go down in the west. So it's always good to know which way the sun's going down, that way. And so I'm thinking of a late evening, gorgeous day, because that's about 85 degrees, quite warm for us people who are just haven't had any warm weather yet. Uh, so sun hitting the top of that triangle and the stained glass windows, I understand they'll turn on the lights on the inside. So I'm looking at this kind of stuff anyway. So if that's what I'm painting, then how do I start? Hello, Mark Toomey. <laughs> Good to have you on board. Thanks for watching. Uh, okay, that's easy enough. Um, I'm going to start with purple. That wasn't very effective, was it? <laughs> Try that again. And once again, the marks that I'm making right now are contrary to contrary to the, the primary shapes in the painting. Uh, I'm not trying to predict or echo the shapes of the painting as I am to contrast them. Okay, so that's done already. If you've never watched me paint before, this is this is very weird to you. If you watch me paint often, then you know the drill. It's like, oh yeah, he does that every time. <laughs> um, next step, while that is beginning to drip and dry, um, I'll do some, some real quick drawing. I guess I'll use purple. Okay. Uh, no, I'm going to move it over a little bit. And I'm going to move the, there's a beautiful bell tower uh, that we, we, I can't quite see from this angle. I can see the corner of it. I'll turn you around one more time. Can you see that bell tower right up there? That's just the corner of it. Um, so I'm going to move it. I have the liberty. <laughs> Most people won't even notice. I'm going to move it that way about 15 or 20 feet so that we'll be able to see it. Later on, I'll, I'll take a picture of that bell tower. Um, so that's what this is up here, is that moved bell tower. And I, I set myself up in this position so that I could uh, catch just a little bit of this roof line. Check to see if that angle's right. Wow, pretty close, yep. My first inclination here is to make the, the peak of this church go off the top of the painting. That's, that's my first inclination. Now, I, I, might, I might stay with that, but I might not. I, I might change my mind and bring it down. In fact, I'll go ahead and draw it right now just so I can, it'll be easier to change my mind. But you may know that I very often make tall buildings go off the top of the canvas because it, in fact, makes them feel taller, contrary to what most people would think. If you're doing a tall building, good idea to make it uh, go off the top of the building. But I think, as I am continuing to draw, I'm not sure I can make it. I think I might have to bring it down. 
So let's try that again. Plenty of architectural challenges here today. Plenty of challenges. So I give myself permission to change my mind many times before I'm finished with this drawing. What I'm doing right now is just a just a rough guess as to what's going on here. And there are going to be people in this painting. Down here, it's a garden party. And so there will be people way down here in the foreground sitting around uh, carefully decorated tables. Should be a, a right pleasant evening. <laughs> Okay, so my wife tried to call me just a few minutes ago. I saw her number come up on my screen. So I'm going to have to take a short break and call her. And um, I'll get back to you guys in just a minute. Okay, just a minute. Okay, I'm back. Got a few things worked out with my wife. All is well. Okay, I think my architecture perspective is coming together reasonably accurately. Reasonably accurately. But I will take a minute here and step back from my canvas. I hope I've learned that lesson. And when you're doing, especially when you're doing kind of a large canvas, it's 30 by 40. You have to step back to see it periodically. Otherwise, yeah, you can make really stupid mistakes. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then this bell tower. Not sure I need to move it over. Oh, that looks really good right there. But it ought to have a tree in front of it. So. As you know, I'm, I'm painting in acrylics, of course, at this point. There's a pine tree. And here's another white pine, ubiquitous in central North Carolina. Uh, I'm painting in acrylics. Just in case you haven't seen, can you see my palette? No, you can't. Hang on just a second. So there's my palette, so to speak. These are, I bought these little containers at a, you know, a food leftover store. You know, yeah, that's not what I mean. You know what I mean? A, food, a store that sells containers geared mostly toward cooks and leftover food. That kind of, that kind of store. Uh, 
but it works very well for me. So all of these uh, nine colors are pre-mixed, roughly 50-50, 50% 50, uh, 50 color and 50% medium. I was worried about that. You got, I'm a, I've got your camera, your tripod a little close to my elbow and I just crunched my elbow pretty hard and just about knocked you over. So I'm going to have to back you up. Uh, but is in the, now the sun's shining in your eyes, isn't it? Okay, so I have to lower you down and back you up. <laughs> Forgive me. Forgive the earthquake here. I know that's not as good a view as you had a minute ago, but uh, I don't want to smash my elbow again. Oh yeah, bell tower. That's right. It is a bell tower. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, One, two, three, four, five. Oh, good. That makes it easy. One. Okay, there should be some perspective showing up here. That line should not be should not be horizontal, should it? Let's get this right. Let's try to get this right right from the get-go that's more fun if you can <laughs> more fun to get it right from the get-go Nearly finished this drawing, quick initial drawing, uh, and the, the air is nice and dry this evening. So the next step will be uh, some colored glazes on top of this drawing, and then we're just we're off to the races. round bush here. Okay. Quick little break right here. I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay. Now some warm glazes on top of all this cool stuff. This is almost certainly going to be another another one of those paintings where there will be people in it, people in the foreground, and usually in a landscape, in a scenic painting, usually figures, people, human beings in the painting create such a strong uh, psychological focal point that it's usually advisable, or usually, usually, um, the people become, or where the people are, becomes the focal point. But uh, this is one of those paintings where that is not going to be the case. Um, I want to put people down here, but I don't want them to be the focal point. It's a little bit, a little bit unusual. Again, because uh, 
you know what a focal point is, but there's also a psychological focal point. Anytime you put a person in a painting, because we are so drawn to people. I did a, I did one like this just a few weeks ago. It was a big a, a painting of a building, a school in the, that's that case. Some of you might have seen it, and I had 50 or 100 kids in the foreground playing in front of the school. But they were not the focal point. They were very much. So I kept them in the shadow. And I feel like it. I feel like it turned out quite successfully. So that, that encourages me that you really can do this. I'm sort of playing, messing with traditional categories. As I said, normally the presence of people means that's also the focal point. But that's not going to be the case. The focal point is going to be the, the top of this building. Okay, and I'm going to do something again. Ah, uh, got a dried out brush here. Rats. I'm going to do something, hello. I'm going to do something here that I've done just a couple times recently, and that is paint white opaque acrylic uh, while this is still wet. So then, of course, it's not, it's not white for long because I'm about to, this won't stay white, of course because I'm about to uh, paint it into wet paint and so it picks up the color that's already there. <laughs> I'm going ahead right now at this early date and this early hour and turning on the lights in the uh, in the stained glass window <laughs> hours before they, they actually come on but I know I'm gonna want them on so this is this is just my first my first interjection of some light effects um, I will while I'm doing this I will tell you about a, a a, a trick and a danger uh, when you're painting anything the danger here is competing light sources or competing light effects hang on just take a minute to come over here and look at the bell tower okay um, everybody knows that play of light is the most important aspect of a painting right Play of light is the most important thing. Um, usually, when you are painting outdoors, there is no question. It is the, the sun. And, and outdoors in the daytime, or outdoors in sunrise or sunset or daytime, what is creating the, the play of light is, of course, the sun, right? You with me so far? Easy. Um, now it's dangerous, but I'm going to try to do it. I'm going to hope I do it successfully. In this painting, I have competing play of light sources. That is to say, there are two things in this painting that are creating interesting light, that are vying for our attention. And usually that's a no-no. Usually that's against the rules. You don't normally want to do that. Uh, the two things are the sun, which is behind the sphere, behind the viewer, uh, and the other light source is the, the light coming through this stained glass window. <clears throat> so one light is hitting the front of the building, the other light is coming through. And it's, uh, well, I'll tell you how I hope to resolve that conflict, because it is a conflict, make, make no doubt about it. Um, and usually such conflicts are best avoided, but I think I can pull it off. <laughs> we'll, we'll all find out together. Um, but the way that I'm going to do that is I have to try to make sure that one is 
preeminent over the other. That <coughs> one of these light sources is clearly more important, even though they're both there, even though they're two distinct and separate and competing sources of play of light, one of them has to uh, win out, win out, so to speak. <coughs> and I better decide really soon <coughs> which one of those it's going to be. Because if I'm confused, I won't do a good painting. I have a little while to decide. I'm thinking that it's, it should be the stained glass windows are the, the primary light, play of light <coughs> element. Sorry. <clears throat> um, and I hope I'm right. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got something stuck in my... <clears throat> dust stuck in my throat. hint, whoops, I'm out of audio picture, sorry, just a hint of uh, tables, people sitting at tables with tablecloths down here in the foreground, so just, just, basically just a mess at the moment, these messes will hopefully turn into people, <laughs> people and tables, can you see it, <laughs> okay, again, um, I'm going to take a short break, step back from this thing, look at it. Thanks for watching. <laughs> hey, Nancy. <laughs> um, I was going to take a little longer break than that, but I, uh, I went and stood back and looked at my painting and realized that I can make this, the pitch of this roof just a little bit steeper and the the top of the church then a little bit higher and hope i'm not screwing up <laughs> you artist you know what i'm talking about you know that feeling now i'm very i'm dangerously close to the ed, to the edge of the canvas um, it would be a horrible visual mistake to uh, make the, the, the peak coterminous end at the same spot as at the top of the canvas. I'm going to do something right now that I rarely do. I have a T-square here with me, and I'm going to try to measure as close as I can. First of all, that gives me the center of the peak here. Let's go down how far? Boom. Yeah, about to there. Okay, here's what I want to do. I want to see if if I'm even here. Not bad. Pretty close. Ooh, that's a relief. That's a relief. So I lucked out. I'm, I'm pretty. I have to make a slight adjustment here, but I'm pretty close to even. Uh, I just need to bring this side down just a little bit more, like that. Now I'm gonna let you watch me. I have to walk way over here. That's 
funny. I feel like it's more accurate the way I just did it now. Okay. In fact, it is bothering me that it's so close to the top of the canvas. So I'm going to have to make I'm going to have to make an adjustment there. Sorry, let me move it around a little bit. Okay, <laughs> I'm running out of colors here. So I'm going to go to blue. <laughs> So, if you don't want to be, sometimes you can you can tell yourself which color to believe, which color to trust. So now I'm saying, okay, trust the trust the blue line here, not the purple one, not the first purple one, not the second purple reddish raspberry one, but the blue one. Okay, so I'm bringing it down just a little bit. Compromise between those first two lines. Now, since I've got the uh, T-square, by the, re the the reason I carry a T-square with me is for is for reasons just like this. Here, let me let me take a second and show you. Um, um, I'm on a sidewalk that goes downhill. See that? And in fact, I've got a little a brush. A brush stuck under my easel down there to help make the easel level. Get the picture? So it's a it's a jerry-rigged, we say around here. I think, that, I think that's a fairly common expression around the world. I mean around the English-speaking world. I've got I've jerry-rigged it to try to make it level, but if the easel is not level, it, it's really, really easy to uh, screw up mess up if you'd rather and um, not make the verticals vertical so that's why I often carry a t-square with me this is one day where I'm really glad I glad I have it Okay, I was pretty close to vertical, and that's a great relief. So I, I'm not making too many adjustments. Oh, this over here is a little bit, a little bit more off. So again, normally I don't, I don't use a straight edge to do my paintings at all. Um, the reason for this is because the easel, I don't trust that the easel is level. So uh, when the easel's not level, my sense of verticality really gets thrown off. I think I'm done with that though, so glad I had it here today with me. Okay, so it's pencil time, isn't it? You've heard me say, if you've watched me before, every time that you, you draw the, the subject matter, every time you draw it, you make adjustments, you make edits. One of the tendencies of beginner artists is they tend to put down initial marks and then believe them, trust them, rely on them, keep them, instead of making corrections after correction after correction after correction. So that the proper impulse is to make marks. You have to start somewhere, but then by no means do you, do you trust those initial marks. You make many, many corrections with each of your subsequent drawings. One of the, one of the tendencies among beginner artists, if you will, is to rush to judgment, I say, is to hurry up and try to get, try to get the, the drawing done. And I, I understand that impulse. It's because you're nervous, you're not sure, that you're, you're afraid you're gonna mess up. <laughs> in the drawing, so you want to hurry up and get it down so you can stop worrying about it. But uh, I take that, I take that impulse to be an, uh, an, a, uh, 
not a beneficial one. Quite the contrary. It's, it's not a good, not a good impulse. So take your time. Make lots of changes. See this line right here? This broad, strong purple line? It's too high, significantly too high, about an inch too high. So, so here, and here's what I want you to hear and see as well. What do I do about this line? The answer is absolutely nothing. Not until the very, very, very last step of the painting process, which is the final edit. At that point, if some of it needs to be covered up, fine, you cover it up. But until then, you don't do anything, because most of the time, those, what I call, erroneous lines, those mistakes, end up being beneficial. They create uh, a rhythm, a uh, texture in the painting that the viewer finds quite uh, appealing. So you don't do anything about those. Here's the bushes. Um, if you I, forgive me, I, I say this all the time. But if you haven't, if you haven't watched me paint before, let me explain a little bit about. A little bit about this pencil. It is very unconventional to use pencils. They're kind of like a grease pencil. It's kind of like Conti crayon in a pencil form, but they're an oil-based or wax-based pencil, not, it's not charcoal. And um, what I'm doing using these pencils does not correspond to what a traditional old-time oil painter does with charcoal sticks at the beginning of the painting. I say old-time, but you know what I mean? That's, that's a very uh, old, established approach to oil painting. It's what my dad did, you know? Back 50 years ago, my dad was a good painter, but he, he followed, at the time, traditional protocol and began his paintings very often, as I remember, with a charcoal, quick charcoal sketch. This is not that. Uh, those artists were doing that primarily to achieve drawing, similitude, realism, to get the drawing down. That's why they did that, right? And of course, yes, I am, in fact, yes, using the pencils for similitude, if you'll let me use that, that fancy word, for realism, for drawing purposes. But the, the primary purpose of my pencil drawings is texture, pure texture. And I typically use pencils twice in the course of uh, a painting. Once typically, once in the oil painting stage, and then again, I mean, once in the acrylic stage, and then once again later in the oil stage. So this is, again, preliminary pencil sketch. I'll probably be doing it again later. It's a beautiful building, in my opinion. Um, I am not always a fan of contemporary architecture or contemporary church buildings, but this one, very contemporary, but I think very beautifully done.
I'm at a point here where I'm still really just trying to get the basic drawing down. Um, I, by no means do I have all the intricacies of this architecture worked out. I'm still seeing things for the first time. Like, oh, who put that there? <laughs> Have you ever had that feeling? Okay, time for a break. Thanks again for watching. So I've done, I've done a little bit of pencil and a little bit of white, and I'm ready to come around again and do more glazes. Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky, doing acrylic glazes on top of this pencil. Uh, if you're trying my technique, then pay attention to this. Um, yes, the uh, the glazes do pick up the pencil, and it'll cause a a gray muddy mess if you're not careful so you have to paint the glazes with a really light touch once the glaze is down uh, then it'll seal in the pencil and that's the end of it you don't have to worry about it anymore um, I'm going to start again with an orange and by the way I put extra medium on my palette that's this stuff just extra so it's extra transparent and so on and so forth orange yellow and water and let's go so you can see how i'm trying to touch each part of the canvas just one time um and not rub come back and rub it any more than absolutely necessary and then the pencil doesn't smear. So that's a bit of a bit of a you know bit of a trick developing that touch. Of course, it also forces you to paint well. <laughs> it forces you to paint economically, which we all ought to be doing all the time anyway. Okay, I'm going to let that go with that. Now I'm going to switch over to some blue uh, glazes up here in the sky. Thalo or ultramarine? I'm going back and forth. I guess I'll do, last time I did Thalo, this time I'll do ultramarine. Same thing, trying not to smear the pencil, just put, put a color down and let it go. Even Let it run even. <laughs> I like runs. I think you can probably tell that by looking at my paintings. By watching the paint. I'm a big fan of runs. <laughs> All kinds of interesting things happening here on the canvas, that's for sure. I'm definitely aiming for the foreground of this painting to be in shadow, quite, quite subdued. All the light in this painting will be at the top of the canvas. Everything down here is going to be in twilight, dusk, dusk-ish colors. Well, at least that's what I think right now. Everything I think is subject to change in my mind. And I'm going to do, again, this, what for me has been a, an unconventional trick, but maybe it's, maybe it's the new convention, I don't know. That is to say, usually I wait for this to dry before I start going into it with, uh, with opaque white. But uh, here lately, I've been not doing that. I've been going, going into it while it's still sopping wet the way it is right now. I'm going to try that again. I've been finding I've been enjoying that. It actually makes me paint a little bit more like a traditional painter, like a traditional oil painter, uh, to paint wet, wet acrylics, wet white acrylic into wet acrylics. Is is a little bit more like an alla prima oil painter, which I will become in just a little while when I start, of course, 
on my oil painting. If you've never watched me before, then uh, let me tell you, I start, I'm painting in acrylics, transparent acrylics, right now, and very shortly here, very soon, I'm going to be switching over to oil, so I paint um, oil on top of acrylic. I've done that for about 14 years now. So acrylics dry, of course, pretty quickly, but not this quickly. <laughs> now, they haven't dried now. I'm, I'm painting definitely wet, wet in wet. So I'm getting a soupy uh, effect, which in previous years I've, I've assiduously avoided soupy messes in, in the acrylic stage. Here I am trying something new. be accompanied by a brass quintet. I'm excited about that. I spent many years playing in brass quintets, high school and college.
Yeah, I was just saying, if Josh, if Josh ended up passing with like, oh, Jacob, do you want to join Josh Pass basketball? I'd probably say no. But you name it before you start it. Yeah. That's what I heard. Did Josh join one? No. start doing something else unconventional for me I'm gonna start I'm mixing up some opaque orange here not extraordinarily rare but a little bit rare for me to, to use opaque colors in the acrylic phase sometimes it just is a little bit of a shortcut I believe after this layer of uh, acrylics right here, I believe I'm going to go to oil. So we'll take a little break. I'll switch all my equipment out for oils and we'll go from there. Okay, quick break. Be back. All right, welcome back. <laughs> hey, Warren, good to hear from you. So ready to go with oil. Um, Here's my oil palette, real quick. Again, rainbow order, purple to ultramarine, and then browns. Ooh, let me get out. Uh, let me get out a uh, few brushes. That would help. Just a handful of brushes and a yellow ochre. Definitely, yellow ochre is definitely one of my go-to colors. Okay, so first item of business in the oil phase is to do an oil glaze over the, over the entire acrylic painting. And uh, I think that years ago it was just lucky, but I think it turns out that my choice of Liquin, Liquin Original, let me show you. This is Liquin, okay? I think that was a serendipitous choice um, that I think makes uh, my oils uh, adhere very well to the acrylics because it turns out the acrylics that I just put on a few minutes ago are they're dry but they're not cured. And, and I, <laughs> Come back to me, come back. <laughs> you just did a complete backflip and landed, thank goodness, in some bushes. <laughs> it's a lot more dramatic from this this point of view. Wish you could have wish you could have seen you guys going. You'd have loved it. Okay, what are you looking at now? <laughs> okay, hang on. <laughs> I'm glad those bushes are there. Anyway, um, these acrylics are dry, but they're not cured. And um, it turns out that uh, the liquid plays nice with oil paint, with, with water. Uh, the liquid is an oil painting medium, of course, but it, it gets along very well with water. I'm sure a chemist could tell me. The chemist could tell me there's a word for that, aqueous or an anhydrous or something like that. I forget what it is, but uh, be that as it may, it's very much to my advantage that the the liquid I think allows the the acrylics to keep breathing. Uh, so in a hundred years, we'll know if if my theory is correct. <laughs> Somebody, please be sure to let me know. <laughs> so I have to 
moment. <laughs> please do, please do. <laughs> Good to see you guys again. Tell me your name. I'm Julie. I haven't met you before, but nice to meet you, Julie. Yeah, yeah. Good to see you again. Crossroads Fellowship. Yeah, yeah. Oh, roller derby. So he did the painting the first year for us. I was trying to figure out, I was like... I'm sorry, I'm glad you guys are not. <laughs> yeah, no, I know who going. you guys are. Party? How have things been going? Good. Yeah? How about you? Staying after it. Are you? <laughs> yeah, anything worthwhile takes effort, so... Yes, indeed. What time did you start working on this? About, uh, 5 o'clock? Okay. Yeah. Maybe a little bit before 5. I should have looked. It's awesome. But yeah, I think the auction, the, the event ends at 9 o'clock, so I, I want to have it done. In time, so people and they're going to auction it off. So, so I thanks for doing it. You're welcome. I'm, I was tickled when I heard it was going for you guys. Oh. <laughs> that is really good. Now, do you, where where do you guys meet? Is it still at neighbor to neighbor? Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Still down there on Blunt. Blunt and Bragg, 1200 South. Oh Blunt. wait, no, that's not where I was talking. I was talking about the old Halifax near that Pilot Baptist Church. What was the name of that place? Anyway, okay, that's you're at Blunt and Bragg. Yeah, we right. used to be on East and Davy and East and Morgan. Are you yeah, thinking yeah, yeah. of uh, no. building together, that's, maybe? Yeah, 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 building together. Exactly Freddie and Helen about. Johnson. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I was thinking of. Yeah. But no, I know, I know you're not them. But, yeah. okay, you're, so you're at Blunt and Bragg. Yeah. Yeah. So it's when, south you're, of when you're leaving downtown, you drive right by the building. I'm going to buy like ish lighting in this painting, um, in in this stage, in the oil glaze. Get, get the foreground... There's a song, when the deep purple haze something, when the deep purple falls over something garden walls. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm trying to paint here. Deep purple falling over something. <laughs> um, and I'm going to, in order to do that, I'm going to use some, lift out some stuff up here. I love, I love lifting out. I love erase painting with a rag. Just love it. It's so fun. Like you, you can exercise so much control without being a control freak, if you know what I mean. And just, just fun. You can exercise a lot of control without the, without the problems that come with control. follow up that with some warm glazes. Everything I did so far is cool. Now let's switch over to some warm stuff. That's as good as 
I can clap. <laughs> I can't even do a, a good, you know, whatever, cat call whistle. <laughs> I can't whistle good. <laughs> okay. Add a little bit. The lights on red with foreground. Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. I really love um, glaze on top, transparent on top, and transparent on top, but transparent. I really love uh, mixing cool on top of warm and warm on top of cool. It's really, really, really fun. Both in the acrylic stage and in the, like this, in the oil glazing stage. Just a lot of fun. Hmm. I'm a little tired. Are you on the right way? Yes, you are. Okay. Hello, welcome back. So, I'm in the home stretch, and the painting's got to be done in an hour. It's going to take me all of that to finish. So I'm glad I started when I did. Um, I did get some pictures, but the <laughs> the lighting never did do. <laughs> what I expected it to do. So, uh, my painting is going to be, remain um, moderately fictitious. <laughs> that is, there's never a time when the sky is this light and there's the, the light coming up through the windows. Um, Um, so I've got to do some quick thinking here and decide if I want to darken those windows. No, I don't think so. I don't think I do. Moment. I've got sort of a dull gray, dull gray colored paint on my brushes. Getting the local color of this, the local color of this roof, approximately correct. Time for me to go take a 
Food break. I'll be back in a bit. So I've gone from feeling, seeming like I've had lots of time <laughs> to now all of a sudden I have exactly one hour, less than an hour to finish this. <laughs> I don't feel like I at all have, I have enough time at all. Uh, I hope, sometimes I think better when I'm in a hurry, think better under pressure. <laughs> I hope, I hope that holds true tonight because I certainly have a lot of work to do and not much time to do it in, so. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't know if I've said earlier, I don't know, the light never did. <laughs> <laughs> it never did turn like this. So, uh, oh well. That's right. No, no, no. It's kind of interesting without this being finished. Yeah, the, it'll stay. I want to do a little more finish, but yeah, I want it to stay abstract. And I want to get some of the colored tablecloths in there. Since I've got green on my brush right now, we'll make this table green. <laughs> yes. Do, that's right. Doing it, doing it many times yes. really helps. <laughs> yeah, you have to, you have to have shortcuts for everything. <laughs> exactly. Is there a purple? No, oh, but there, there, but there will there be. Will be. <laughs> there yes. will be in my yes. painting. Artistic license is a beautiful thing. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're for very welcome. This. Thank you.
excited, yeah. Okay, I'm going to kind of do something I don't usually do. Um, I'm going to mix up some dark, transparent, dark stuff. I just feel like my whole painting is suffering for lack of definition. And uh, I'm going to mix up some transparent, dark, purplish brown. And just, come on, get in here and start doing... bunch of drawing. I don't usually do this. So I hope to finish I hope to do two steps before I run out of time tonight. One is these dark details that I'm doing right now and then coming back and doing light highlights. Now I barely have time I think to get both of those things done. But at the moment, as I said, I feel like my painting is suffering from um, just a lack of definition. I know you're getting, I'm getting a terrible glare. I can, I can hardly see what I'm painting up there.
if I have time, I'd also like to come back and do some more uh, pencil lines. But I don't know that I'll have time for that. Um, I just I just hope I'm painting well. <laughs> At the moment, I wouldn't guarantee it. I'm just <laughs> painting on instinct. I don't know where all my time went. I mean, for much of the evening, I thought I was doing just great, but all of a sudden, like, wait a minute, <laughs> I gotta be done in an hour. Oh man, I feel like I've got about two hours of work to do yet. Uh, I definitely want to come and put different colored clothes on on many of these figures. And that's, I feel like, a very important detail. And again, I feel I'm, I'm quite certain that at the end of this drawing stage right here, my, my painting will be entirely too liney, too linear. Um, but I hope I can fix that with the, the subsequent stage phase. Are you right. thinking of vertical lines? Or are you, uh... Pardon? Or vertical? Like you're worried about the vertical lines? Are you being vertical? No, I. No, are the lines? Are, and you're, do they look vertical? No, I mean, they're, um, it's an amazing thing. I, <laughs> I was just watching this at your technique and your two hands. I'm sorry. <laughs> I did not mean to interrupt you. That's me. quite all right. No, no, quite all right. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, w I was saying, I'm talking to my broadcast. Of course you are. And no, I was I'm saying, sorry to no, that's quite all right. No, no. They know people, they, they like people to come and talk to me. Okay. <laughs> they're quite okay. used to it. Um, no, I'm, I was saying that, that I felt like the painting a few minutes ago really lacked punch and definition. So I'm doing all this dark kind of dropping yeah. kind of stuff. Yeah. But now it's entirely too droppy. <laughs> so I've got one more stage to go. The lines are very Yeah, the lines are strong. We're going to let you... Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, Bobby. <laughs> That's quite, no, no. Thank you, for, thank you for speaking. I enjoy it very much. It's very impressive, isn't it? I paint better <laughs> in mayhem. No, I haven't. I just started using two hands about 10 or 12 years ago. I forced myself to be ambidextrous. Oh, wow. Yeah, isn't that crazy? I suppose it actually gives you that opportunity to be a bit quicker. Yeah, that's right. You can't, you can't paint faster with two hands. True enough. I turned on the lights. Oh, these lights are supposed to be coming on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're taking their time about it. <laughs> is this a live broadcast out to? Is Pardon? This a is this a live broadcast? Yes, it is to uh, YouTube. Okay. Yeah. It's a very neat skill you have. Oh, thank you. Okay, I'm going to stop there with the drawing. So you've obviously been doing this a while. Yeah, a while. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Quite a bit. <laughs> thank you. Okay. So where to start with this color? Uh, I, I have to clean up my palette. There's no, there's no room left on the palette for mixing paint, so I 
even though I'm in a hurry, I have to waste time scraping paint. Okay. Now, we're going to start with color. Um, actually, the sky is bothering me. Man, if the sky ain't right, <laughs> color, when you're talking color, if the sky's not right, nothing is right. So, I want to introduce some warmth, uh, yellow orange into the sky. And hope I don't ruin it. I, I, I've been feeling, especially from a distance, like the the contrast between this super warm building and the super cool sky was was too stark. So I'm uh, I, I decided to come in and warm up the sky a good bit. Obviously, evening, twilight, sunset. The sun is setting behind us, but of course, the the sky opposite the sunset often also turns warm sunset colors. There, that is better. Okay, that's better. Okay, now I want to uh, give some highlights to the light that's coming through the windows. And unfortunately they have not, oh, okay, they just now turned on the, the lights inside, but it's a little bit too late and they're not nearly bright enough for me. So I'm just gonna paint them, unfortunately, a whole lot brighter than they actually are. Um, Thank you. I just noticed that just now. Is, is that as bright as they go? Oh, I don't know. I yeah. Thank you. And thank you for doing these lights over here, too. Yeah, I'll go in and see. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank I, you. I, I think so, but the kids will turn them on, so I'll make sure. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I have a friend on the inside. <laughs> right, right when I turned around and said they had, the lights had come on, my Bruce, my friend, came and said, is that enough? So he had just turned them on. Thanks, Bruce. Definitely helps. And he also turned on these lights over here, which until now has been complete darkness, so that, that's a big improvement. It's getting pretty out here. Um, okay, let's do clothing on people. Um, and I have a formula for this too. Um, just for what it's worth, and it definitely helps at a time like this. Um, I need to pick one woman and put her in a red dress. And yeah, that becomes like a visual anchor. And then a few other people also in red but not the same color red, so let's go towards purple. <laughs> no. I am, yeah. I'm in a bit of a, a kind of a hurry up fun, yes. No, please, do, please, oh, by all means, please do. Thank you. Are you looking at this screen here to paint from? Uh, no, that's actually my video. I took I took a picture and I have it here. I've got you. 
<laughs> you know, I, I was trying to take a guess what the light would look like. Yeah, I missed my mind, but it's too late to change it. So. Oh, and who cares? It's that's, that's good. That's the right answer. <laughs> that's the right answer. Isn't that amazing how subtle those colors are? That's exactly. It sure is. It certainly is. That's exactly. That's a good, great word for it. Amazing You've indeed. You've done a beautiful job. Well, thank you. Okay, so I'm going around the color wheel. I don't know if I made that clear. I started with red, then went to purple, then to purplish blue, now the bluish purple, and so on and so on and so forth. So just creating abstract splashes of color to, to suggest people wearing clothing, wearing colored clothing. Of course, people are wearing clothing. That's not what I mean. I mean, people wearing colors. Uh, that's enough of the blue. Let's go right on around to green. Not very many people wear green generally, although this is a springtime party. Uh, I see a couple greens. Yeah. So I have a, I have a commission <laughs> to do a couple greenish things. Enough, sorry. Okay, and then uh, the yellow. It is starting to look a little bit like a like people in in bright colors. Um, and again, people rarely wear yellow or orange. I see one yellow dress, that's good. I'll do one. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing very well, thank you. Uh, okay. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> How are you? Let's see. Thank you, thank you. I'm in a hurry. Okay. That doesn't mean I'm talking to you. That's okay. If you're that's down, down there at the okay. table, <laughs> you'll just watch. Yeah. And yeah. somewhere else, it's time to come over to the patio. house in Beaufort and you painted it sort Are of you by, serious? Well, sort, I mean by accident you were yeah. just painting a street scene but yeah. there were two houses in there and All right. it's on Orange Street and it's like you painted it we're wondering where everybody is <laughs> okay. it had sort of a purplish hue to it oh, and, um, is it, was it a morning scene is it your porch or it was the whole street but was it, it was okay. two houses yeah. that were featured and mine was the white, the white one but, oh, but uh, Patricia Suggs that runs the yeah. Beaufort Historic you probably know Patricia yeah, sure she, uh, she called me she goes I'm selling this house and nobody, uh, this painting nobody's bought it do you want to buy it. And, uh, and so the, you did? Well, no. At the time, I had a, I didn't, I, I didn't have, I wasn't oh, in a position you. to pay for it. And I called her back later, and I said, I think I want that painting. Do you still have it? She goes, No, it's sold. Oh. So, <laughs> so somebody so got I, a painting. I, so I may, I may wind my way back to you one day. Good, and get please you to come back do, down yeah, there. Yeah. Grab one yeah, of my yeah, cards yeah. here. I'd be delighted. I love everybody. painted a lot in Beaufort. Beaufort's fun. It uh, is well fun. And, uh, How much of the time do you live down there? Well, we go on weekends, and I go for a week or two in the summer. Yeah. Do you rent? No. Yeah, yeah. I, I've talked about it. My wife goes, yeah. you know, if you rent, people mess your place up. Oh, I know. So I know. It's, yeah. it, that'd be a hard decision. It's a different business, isn't it? Dr. Marshall is your next customer. Well, I was telling, I was telling <laughs> Very good. Very good. I was telling, he, Very he's good. painted some scenes down in Beaufort. And, uh, and I painted his house and already. We have a house right. down there, and he pained it. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> That's great. About after the fact. Did you get a royalty? No, 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 not at all. I did not get permission. So I did not get permission to paint his house. Well, I mean, you were painting down fair, by the Mellow Mushroom on Glenwood not a few weeks That's ago. That's exactly right. I saw you out there did on the street. Did you? Yeah. 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 Fair, fair My kids use. were like, hey, look, that guy's painting. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Good. Glad to hear it. Yeah. Very good. And you are? Robert Marshall. Yeah, nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Nice to be gorgeous. Thank Greg you. said he came out and this canvas was empty at six. And you've been talking for half the time. That's so right. The fact that you've painted this in two hours is pretty amazing. <laughs> well, three maybe, but... You probably don't do most of your paintings in two hours or less, do you? 
No. Yeah. Not, uh, but a fair, a fair it looks number. Really good. A fair number. Thank now, you. Have you touched that Kansas with anything but butt paint, or is, like, no? You didn't sketch it with pencil or anything. Well, I do, but it's a technique. Okay. I, I do the pencil later because okay. I like the contrast. I got it. I might even do a little bit more, yeah. but no, I didn't. I didn't do a sketch first. <laughs> good job. Thank you. No. <laughs> so it looks like a bunch of people. I hope. Let me come in here. And Hit some just a few highlights of color on those tables, the tablecloth colors. This red table here. Let's make that a little bit more punchy. This one also. Anything else around here need red? Here's a trick, by the way, when there's a line that's just too liney, scratch it. Makes it less linear. Uh, I can't use those pretty brushes. When you're in this much of a hurry, you really don't have time to clean the brushes. So. Hello. Just let it flow, man. Yeah, Just rush you, it out you, and don't you. worry. Don't sweat it. Fire, <laughs> right, fire right in like the mighty oh, William yeah. Alexander. You're, you're like fire the almighty tree in there. <laughs> you, are, you are telling me the right thing, man. I Just fire that. in, man. Let go. <laughs> let it flow. Let it go. He's an oracle. He comes and gives me the word. <laughs> Just come in. I, I, I can feel you're getting the pressure of rush. Yeah, and yeah, time, I can't, yeah, and just right. come in. Look now, now with the illuminated light strand, just fire in with those. That's I will. That's fire right, right in. Exactly. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for the encouragement. And <laughs> you're right on target. It man. looks good. You are right on target. We need uh, some, okay, some blue highlights. Because as soon as all those lights come in, then all that's going to get pushed right back. And, and, we heard about you again. Oh, good. Please do. <laughs> Please come. Oh, God, the, li the light looks great. Oh, good. I gotta pick, it, pick myself out, don't I? Yes, yes. <laughs> Oh, flowers, flowers. <laughs> not, not many flowers. No time for flowers. Flower <laughs> pink, how about that? Okay, pink, I'll take it. Pink is Yeah. It worked when the light was. <laughs> when there was no... Did you start this whole thing? I sure did. Just... Yeah. You didn't come over and do the church first? No, no. <laughs> Oh, you yeah. see what he told me a little while ago, that he does a lot of wedding related things. And yeah, so man. he will do like the first dance, and then it'll be painted by the end of the reception. Yep. But not dry. That's right, not dry. <laughs> not, definitely not dry. Well, it's beautiful. I'll oh, check thank on it you. again in a while. Good. Why do you think I'm going to stick with it? Yeah. that I want to do this, but I'm not sure that I don't. I just come in with a little bit of pencil and create a little bit more texture here and there and here and there. That pencil just died.
match that color just about perfect. So that's easy. That means I just need to add a little bit more white to it. And, and I can come in and just hit some of the final highlights. It's minor. <laughs> Sorry if you're leaving any comments. I don't have time to look at them tonight. <laughs> I don't need time to talk to you, can you tell? I am rarely under this much pressure, but I sure am tonight. Nice colors. I must say, nice colors. I'm not disappointed with the color. I do want to come in with some various and sundry things in there. I want to smooth out this roof. It's a little bit too busy. A um, little more highlights in some of the white stuff. And it's going to be free. And 
Trying to mix up a neutral gray here. Well, not neutral. It needs to be warmer gray. So this is the Sunday Reserve Parking Pass. Okay? So what that means is Way too bright. Way too bright. It's dark in there. Ultramarine, oxide red. So the, the pastor of the church is the auctioneer. <laughs> He's actually doing a pretty good job. For, uh, you know, <laughs> having a lot of fun. All right, good. I may have to run out of here any second. Get, get up there get, get my painting in the auction. La próxima cosa es una cena para otra persona. The next one is a place for Italian dinner for eight people with Chippendale waiters. Uh, as we're in the same, uh, Bay, David Hayden, John Thompson, and Rich Townsend are going to be wearing nothing but bow ties. And they're going to be there. There's going to be, oh wait, I'm sorry. Tuxedo. Sorry. It says Tuxedo. Uh, actually, it, that would be better. That would be better. Uh, yeah, so it says right here the Chicken Dales. Uh, so you can choose whether you want an Italian or a French dinner for eight people, eight more, with waiters, and any kind of or other bodies. And then they uh, would be either, presumably, in your home.
Johnny C. Colt County Tennis, a match from the Judge of the Boston Hats off the Daddy of the Rabbit. You're rocking and tapping the fans here with it from now until the five ten hour. Trying to feed, trying to knock you, you mean, trying to reform your dorm, trying to do a little good in your neighborhood. From the nitty gritty of the colonial city, operating from town to knowledge, going to the games, WCWM FM, radio voice of Global Women's Tennis. Two sweet things that are too proud to be loud. The men hate us because we throw a line, the women love us because we take our time. If you don't get you don't get out there and you got a hole in your soul and you ain't never had chicken on Sunday. I think I'd probably better head up that way. You may say 